Welcome to Neuro Noodles Neurofeedback and Neuropsychology Podcast featuring tech legend Jay Gunkelman. He is the man who has read over a half a million brain scans. Our goal is to provide information and promote options for better mental health. The Neuro Noodle Podcast is supported by listeners and viewers just like you. And a special thanks to our gold and silver supporters. Earn up to 16 CEU hours by attending Applied Neuroscience's NeuroGuide Workshop December 10th and 11th in Madeira Beach, Florida. It's led by none other than Dr. Robert Thatcher himself. There are two ways you can attend online or in person with the link appliedneuroscience.com slash attend hyphen ng hyphen workshops. And if you sign up now, you can join Dr. Robert Thatcher at his house for a pre-course get-together December 9th. It's going to be a blast. What a better way to enjoy winter by being in Madeira Beach, Florida and earning up to 16 CEU hours. Sign up now at AppliedNeuroscience.com slash attend hyphen ng hyphen workshops. MindMedia.com. Get the latest EEG and neurofeedback technology from MindMedia.com. Their semi-dry sensor cap is a wonder to see and their EEG amplifiers have been trusted in the field for decades. Their neurofeedback and QEEG courses will get you up to speed in no time Visit MindMedia.com now. My name is Pete, and today we have a very special guest, Dr. Saul Rosenthal with the Northeast Region Biofeedback Society. And he's going to tell us all about their online conference coming up in a few days. It's called Coping with Stress in Today's World, Solutions for Anxiety, Depression, and Burnout. And it's going to be this Friday and Saturday, October 21 and 22. Saul, did I get that right? You did, Pete. Thanks uh, so much for having me on the show. Now, Saul, for the people, you know, we got a lot of new listeners every day, new watchers. First of all, what is the NRBS? Because I'm sure we'll use that acronym quite quite a bit. It's been around 40, they've had 47 conferences. Is that true? Yeah, this will be the, the 47th uh, conference. So we've been around about 50 years. It is the the acronym is Northeast Region Biofeedback Society. That's the Northeast region of the U.S. And we are uh, one of the regional uh, biofeedback and neurofeedback societies sort of under the umbrella of the, the national and international uh, organizations. So we've been around for a long time, but particularly the last few years, we've been drawing from actually all over the world. There's a, we, we do monthly webinars, we do trainings, things like that. And with the internet, of course, people can tune in from everywhere, including into the conference, which is going to be fully virtual this year. I just met Mitch and Angelica Sadar at the SUSUN 2022 conference out in Cali. Mm -hmm. Wonderful people, by the way. They are. Uh, we, yeah. we met on the side and they told me all about this. How did it get going? Well, there have been uh, regional uh, neurofeedback organizations for many, many years. It does predate them. Uh, and I think ever since the, uh, actually, I think the first sort of biofeedback conference was in California, uh, which eventually became uh, AAPB, the, the uh, Association for Applied Psychophysiology Physi and Biofeedback, had a different name for a while. And because people are all over, they started grouping together and working together to learn more about biofeedback and neural feedback and to sort of spread the word. So the Northeast yeah. region obviously has been around for 50 years. There actually was a New England uh, regional for a while, but kind of joined together with the Northeast region probably in the last 15, 20 years, I think. So it's been run basically by those of us who enjoy the work, doing the work, but also see the power of, of the approach. Now, it's going to be an online conference, and I also met uh, one of the people that will be coming on, uh, uh, Dr. Rusty, I, I, I call him, uh, yeah. great piano player. Uh, who are some of the people that are going to uh, uh, show up for the event? Sure. Well, Rusty Turner is one of them, and he's probably fairly well known by the folks out there who at least do QEEGs. He's, he's sort of the go-to neurologist, but he's actually... He's actually going to be talking with uh, Michael Cohen, who may be another 
uh, well-known name, uh, author of uh, Neurofeedback 101, I think is the name of that book. Right. Uh, so the two of them are going to be talking actually about the effects of electric magnetic fields on the EEG, things like Wi-Fi that we are now living with all the time. So those are two. Um, other well-known names will be there. Eric Pepper is going to be giving a talk. Um, Harry Campbell is going to be talking with Mary Jo Sabo about the Yonkers Project. And, and for, for those who don't know, the Yonkers Project brought neurofeedback into a, a, a number of uh, uh, public schools in, in Yonkers, New York in the 90s. Uh, probably the best known person who will be there is Stephen Porges, and he will be, of course, talking about the polyvagal theory. They are in the, mostly in our Northeast region, of course, but they'll be talking about things like bringing neurofeedback into schools, working with kids who may be uh, traumatized or highly stressed out. Uh, so a whole lot of talks really focused on, as you said, anxiety, on depression, on burnout all of which we are, of course, sort of living in this soup right now, which right, is right. Was driving a lot of that. Now, you can be a new tech. You can uh, be a mom and dad. You want you know, learn more about it. Uh, and it's an online conference, so it should be, you know, pr pr uh, pretty welcoming. Um, you know how we can make it more welcoming, uh, Saul? Just I might have an idea, too, but why, why don't you uh, make a suggestion? Well, I'm just... <laughs> Is it possible? Now it's just us listeners just and us. watchers. Uh -huh. Is there a coupon code we could use? There, for this? in fact, is a coupon code. Um, and, and I just actually want, want to emphasize something you just said, which is we are a region, we are an organization of clinicians primarily, but we really want to bring the word to others uh, students, parents, people who are just interested in what we call applied psychophysiology. That's uh, a long word, which basically means bringing together physiology with psycho psychology. It all happens in the brain. And so it's all part of the package. So a, a lot like the Neuro Noodle podcast, we, we really are trying to uh, appeal to anybody who's interested. So if you are interested in this conference, uh, you can go over to register at the uh, NRBS website, which is nrbs.org. And the coupon code is happy listener. That's one word. And it is a 25% off the cost of the, of the conference. In addition to the conference itself, you will have access to all of the talks for 30 days. So if you can't make the days of the con conference, which is the 21st and 22nd, you still will have access. And I think there are a few other um, little bonuses that uh, come along with the registration. Got it. 25% off. You heard it's, it here first. That's, that's right. So Saul, you have a podcast too. Tell me about that. Um, so th the podcast is, is, uh, is, is, sponsored by the NRBS. I, I'm, I'm just the, the host. Uh, sure. And it is called Healthy Brain, Happy Body. Uh, and we started it, we're, we're, we're seeing what's what's happening. We, in many ways, I'm actually inspired by the Neuro Noodle podcast because it has oh. expanded. It, it has expanded beyond, again, us, just us professionals. You're right, right. Uh, it is uh, more around not just neurofeedback, but also biofeedback. And we have kind of the the things you would expect and the people you would expect, but we're also trying to look at other factors that might impact the mind body uh, relationship. So we're talking about things like uh, systemic racism and which has an impact on the expression of anxiety, but also on healthcare. And we we I talked with um, two folks. Uh, uh, Duran Young, who is uh, a therapist down in the, the Washington, D.C. area, and Charmaine Jackman, who's a psychologist up here in Boston. Um, I've talked with uh, Janet Schles, who is over at the Rush University Medical Center, about what is it like, what's the stress of returning to work now that we are doing that face-to-face -face more and more. So we're, we're focusing on what you would expect from a biofeedback and neurofeedback podcast, but I'm trying to just kind of push those boundaries a little bit and see who else we can talk to who might bring kind of new, kind of a new voice, if you will, to this sure. discussion we've been having. Now, how did you get in the world of podcasting? For me, it was a necessity. I needed some type of marketing for my 
uh, business because COVID shut us down for a little bit. So I had to, you know, do something and I just fell into it. How did you get going with it? Um, it, In some ways, it's a return to a a previous life, sort of. I uh, many, many years ago did some uh, very amateur level of uh, audio engineering. And and this was in the days when we used to cut tape with razor blades for real. Um, but I really loved it. And I never planned to make and still do not plan to make a living out of doing it. But then I, I started thinking about going into podcasting and uh, probably about three and a half, four years ago, started thinking about it. And then the coronavirus hit. Um, my practice shrunk initially and then blew up. But while it was still right. shrinking... I put a a podcast together, actually. So this is my second one. My first podcast was called Life in the Time of Corona. And it's a limited, I think there's uh, 18 episodes. uh, And I mostly talk to people I know, kind of friends and family. Jay Gunkelman was was nice enough to to be one. Eric Pepper was another guest on it. Ina Kazan, for those who know know her. Um, And so I, I kind of was exploring the idea of what does it mean to live in the time of a pandemic? Uh, and then my practice exploded like many of ours has, and I, I couldn't keep it up. But then when this opportunity came along, uh, I, I like to say when they asked uh, who would do it, everyone else stepped backwards and I just didn't. But but the truth is, I really <laughs> love doing this this work. I, I like uh, talking. I like yakking. I mean, that's why I'm a yeah, psychologist. Yeah. Uh, and I like the technical piece, too. So it's a lot. Of, it's it's fun. And, and it obviously, it would be nice to get some some more people to here and be interested in the conference and in the NRBS, but primarily just to learn more and to get more people interested in mind body health. Now, how did you get into neurofeedback itself? Mm-hmm. My, my interests are probably about 25 ish years ago um, when I came to train as a, as a clinician, it was actually, um, I, I retrained as a clinician. I was a, a research psychologist uh, working in a medical school. So uh, I was doing a lot of health related work. And in my training, I uh, did a postdoc at uh, up here. So the, 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 there's a hospital system, the Cambridge Health Alliance, and they had a behavioral medicine program, which had been around for 30 years. It was, it was very a- ahead of its time. And we, we did uh, biofeedback training. And in fact, it was the only BCIA certified training program in a hospital. And I think still is, I'm not positive about that. Unfortunately, the program shut down. But while I was uh, training in in biofeedback, neurofeedback was a piece of that. So I got some some training in that and we met with a few of the the local practitioners uh, of neurofeedback. And so it was really intriguing to me. Uh, As I played around with it a little bit, eventually I, I did get training, BCIA training uh, uh, with uh, John Demos and um, really find it very interesting because of uh, I'm very interested in the physiology of these things and how those physiology and psychology play out together. Uh, so that's, that's kind of my primary interest. I do a lot of work with uh, chronic pain and with chronic anxiety. Uh, and I do a fair amount of um, concussion and other traumatic brain injury. And I'm doing sort of ADHD executive function. That's kind of a bread and butter thing, I think, for most of us. Yeah. When I was talking with uh, Mitch and Angelica out in uh, Susan, the the topic of concussions came up because I don't know if you saw uh, the quarterback for the Miami Dolphins, uh, Tua, he got banged hard one day for, uh, in a game, and then four days later he had to come back and play, and he got banged again. And uh, his hands just crippled up on him, and I'm sure every mom and dad is watching this game saying, oh, my God, my kid's never going to play that sport again. What is What have you – do you have a lot of athletes that come through the practice? Uh, and And then how do you deal with the concussion side of things – uh, do you, do you give them a, a, a QEEG uh, baseline before the season starts? So you have something to compare it to in case something happens. Uh, what, what do you do over there? So most of the, the folks that I've seen who have concussions, it's sort of too late. <laughs> They've, uh, as is probably true a lot because 
unfortunately still so too few people know about this work. So I have seen primarily they were student athletes and uh, soccer is a really great sport to play. Earn up to 16 CEU hours by attending Applied Neurosciences NeuroGuide Workshop December 10th and 11th in Madeira Beach, Florida. It's led by none other than Dr. Robert Thatcher himself. There are two ways you can attend, online or in person with the link appliedneuroscience.com slash attend hyphen ng hyphen workshops. And if you sign up now, you can join Dr. Robert Thatcher at his house for a pre-course get-together December 9th. It's going to be a blast. What a better way to enjoy winter by being in Madeira Beach, Florida and earning up to 16 CEU hours. Sign up now at AppliedNeuroscience.com slash attend hyphen NG hyphen workshops. If you want concussions. Uh, and so people will come to see me and they may have had the concussions anywhere from a year prior to 20 years prior. And it's often multiple concussions because you get one and you're at risk for another and you get two. And we know we have no research on that afterwards because it's too many variables. Right. So typically when someone comes in to see me with concussion, there's some sort of brain fog. There's some sort of executive function. There may be an impulsivity issue and they just aren't doing well in school suddenly or aren't able to keep up with work. So I, I always start with the QEEG, particularly for brain injury. And then I kind of follow the cue and integrate what we know works with if whatever the, the issue, primary issues are, whether it's attention or anxiety or impulsivity. They, they make kids get a physical every year. Why don't they make the kids get a I'm not a clinical guy. I'm a, right. I'm an MBA guy. You know, I'm a business guy. But from a common sense thing, if, if you can make the kids get a physical to get a baseline on what their physical attributes are, why aren't you doing one for their mental attributes? Just curious. I, I, think, I, I think that's a great question. Around here, uh, student athletes do take a quick test for a concussion that they use as a baseline. And then if they're, they have a head hit, they take it again. So around here, that is done. Um, it's not EEG based. It's right. obviously self-report based. There, there certainly is an argument for doing uh, uh, pre-baseline uh, QEEGs and following them along. It's too expensive. I mean, that, that's one problem. Uh, right. And again, not enough people know about it. Now, there, there are some uh, uh, people who are doing it. I, I think it was... Um, Donaldson, I'm, I'm sorry, I've forgotten his first name, was, who had been uh, working with hockey players. Uh, he was doing some ongoing work with that. And there are there are some small programs where they've gotten some funding to do uh, baseline cues. And then if there's a hit, they'll do a post cue. But it, yeah. it's just not known enough and it's too expensive. Yeah. It's almost like from the business side of things, it's almost like I want to reach out to the schools and say, you got any student athletes, cheerleaders, come on in. I'll do it at cost, whatever I got to pay the tech to do it. And I'll just give you the report. I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to diagnose. It's just, you're going to have it. So in case something happens, you can go to a neur neurologist. You can come to my clinic. You can go wherever, get another, get another cue and compare, you know, after the event just so people get in the habit and the routine of it because like you said it it insurance doesn't cover it right it's a cash cash business and you know you can't stay in business doing everything for free but you also have to have something where it's marketing slash helping out uh you think something like that could work ac across the country just to get people to come in to get a baseline or that would just overwhelm people, you think? I think th I think it is worth considering seriously. Uh, I think many of the uh, neurofeedback practitioners I know are doing some sort of outrage, not just for marketing, although of course that's important, but also because we we do this because we have seen it work. We 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 read the research; it works in research. We have seen the clients; it works with our clients. 
And so we we are a bit evangelical about it. But I do think that a, a plan like that makes an enormous amount of sense where you identify a need like student athlete and start reaching out. And again, I, I know that that there are individuals doing that, but a, a mass of us doing that makes certainly a lot more sense. So that could be our okay. next project to organize. Check, check the box. Okay. Yeah, exactly. We th we've solved that problem. All right. How did Mitch and Angelica find you, Saul? That is such a good question. Um, I suspect I found the NRBS, actually. Okay. And I, I used them to uh, analyze my cues, although I knew them before that because I was using Jay's group while he was still yeah. working. Right. Not that he's not working, even though he says he's not. Um, <laughs> and so I, I came to NRBS and I, I, I suspect I probably first met them at an NRBS conference, which was in Boston, which is also the first time I ever heard Jay speak uh, live. And I was, as many of us are, enraptured. Um, so that, that so I've known them for several years. And then a, a, I, I'm on the board of the NRBS now, uh, as well as AAPB. And, and so when a, a opening came onto the board, I think they look, were looking up here because they want to get re representation from the entire region. And, and so that's sort of how I ended up a little bit more involved. Got it. Because they're nice people. They even are. Though they're, even though they're from Philly. I am from Philly. <laughs> uh, and You're like, from I am Philly more, too, so? I am more from Philly than they are. Oh, okay. Because um, I think, I, I don't know about Mitch, but I think Angelica is originally from New York. So she's a, she's an interloper, you're right. as we yeah. might say. No, yeah. I, I am bred and born in Philly. I have not lived there for a long time, but I, yeah. I am Philadelphian. I just knew because when I walked into the meeting, they were booing me. Yes, <laughs> yes, that would be, yes. I don't have such strong feelings. but <laughs> Conference you're going to have this Friday mm -hmm. and Saturday, October 21, 22. What are some of the headings that some uh, new techs may want to check out and uh, if they don't know it or they do know it, brush up on? What do you think would be uh, of interest to somebody that, uh, let's just say they just went through the BCIA certified training and they're like, oh, man, I need just a little bit more to t top me off. What do you think would be of interest to them? Well, I think I think that there will be several that are interesting, um, whether, again, you are sort of a new tech or an old hand or just sort of interested in general. You know, I think it's always useful to, to hear about polyvagal theory. Um, and I think that that has implications both for biofeedback and for neurofeedback. So um, Stephen Porges will be talking about that. And probably the most direct connection with, with biofeedback would be, would be with heart rate variability biofeedback. And uh, but th but there is now work being done trying to look at uh, polyvagal theory, heart rate variability, and neurofeedback. What effect does it have on the EEG? It, Eric Pepper is always terrific to listen to, um, and you always learn something from him, no matter how many times you you speak with him. I think for those, uh, uh, and I think this is actually true for everyone, but I think that the new folks in particular, I think. Uh, the talk on uh, on the Yonkers project, uh, Mary Jo Sabo and and Harry Campbell. I think what, it's what is really... the Yonkers project? So the, for... yeah, so the Yonkers project was in in I think it was the 1990s. Uh, they Mary Jo Sabo and Harry Campbell brought neurofeedback into I can't remember six or seven schools in Yonkers, and they were there for six or seven years, and really saw amazing changes in behavior and in uh, in in school performance uh, so much so that they actually were able to get a lot of funding for the for that time and it was like anything else anything coming into a new school the the teachers were not quite on top of, on, on board with it at first right. the parents weren't what are you doing sticking these sensors onto my kids but the outcomes were powerful enough that really the, the school system came in. And it's really terrific to hear the history piece of it for those of us, you know, for those who are new into the field to see where we've come from. But also you could just see this happening now and we should still be doing it now. And hopefully those of you who are new and looking for something to do, we'll, we'll pick it up and do it. So, so I think that that's 
another really great um, a talk that that to be listening to. I, I think here the Rusty Turner and um, Michael Cohen talk will be really interesting because we we kind of all know them, but they're going to be talking about something they usually don't talk about, and it's fascinating. I, I've I interviewed both of them for the podcast, and we all kind of know we shouldn't be having our phones near us all the time and we should turn get them out of our bedrooms. But when you look at the data, as Rusty in particular does, and anybody who knows him should not be surprised, it, it is it's really quite remarkable the effects that EMF might have on our brains and behaviors. So that's another area. There's going to be a few talks on school-age children and working with, with them any parent, anybody who works with kids, anybody who knows a kid knows that these past three years have been horrendous. And in fact, in some ways, this school year, which is kind of the first where there's more and more schools going back to so-called normal, yeah. kids are really falling apart. And, you know, I work with kids. I have a lot of colleagues who do uh, in, in every area of, of, of therapy, and we are all being drowned by uh, referrals and the kids are are not all right. But we have a tool, we have an intervention that I think could be really useful. So if you're interested in working with kids, there's a few talks on that as well. So something for everybody. Well, you say the kids, what about the counselors? I, I didn't, I don't see it, the budgets increasing, right? No. For the schools, <laughs> you know, so the, they're, they're getting overloaded. Absolutely. That, that is really true. Uh, and the the budgets are not increasing. In some places, they're decreasing because there's been reduced tax revenue for the public schools. Yeah. The, the, one of the things that I see that, that I guess makes me a little bit more optimistic, you always have to look for that, is there is, I think, a growing recognition of the power of emotion on even school performance. So the things that we might not always connect. I think more and more of the school systems, more and more of parents, more and more of people who are in those decision-making positions are recognizing that we need to support the all areas of health, the mind, body, the intellectual part of it, the uh, social, emotional pieces. And so again, I think that that's where something like biofeedback and neurofeedback can have a lot to say because we, we are sort of a mind body intervention. I mean, you brought up HRV. I mean, there's mm -hmm. nothing more powerful to show that you have control over your body. It, absolutely. It's, it's powerful to see that you can change something as fundamental as heart rate or as temperature, particularly in, in such a stressful environment in which we're living. The, the, the problem, if you will, with chronic stress, or one of the problems, is that sense of I have no control over what's going on. And if we can start to recognize, well, actually, we can modulate influence. We don't like the word control. Influence right. something as basic as physiology. Then we start being able to think, well, maybe I actually can affect things like how I react in a situation. I may not have control over the situation entirely, but if I can modulate my own response to it, I'll do better. Well, they want to have control over taking a pill. So if they're going to take Adderall, okay. Mm -hmm. But there are other options. It's just amazing from what I hear on kids. You can do it, but there are options that can get you where you want to go in the to get you in the zone to study than taking those pills. Isn't that right, Saul? That's a, absolutely true. And obviously neurofeedback is, is there's a lot of evidence that neurofeedback work, can work as well as Adderall. But when you start to add some of these other modalities like heart rate variability, or even just respiration training, there's now data showing that changes in heart rate variability, changes in respiration can also have an impact on attention. We not going to get into the politics of it or the economics right, of it, right, which right. which are really important. But you're right; there are certainly other options, and it would be nice to be able to have these other options available a little bit more than they are now. So, what is the URL to learn more about the uh, conference you have coming up? Sure. 
So you could just go over to the Northeast Region Biofeedback Society, which is nrbs.org, and you'll see a, a link or a page about the conference. And when you register, be sure to use the happy listener. That is happy listener, one word, H-A-P-P-Y-L-I-S-T-E-N-E-R code, and you'll get 25% off the fee, which is not a high fee in the first place for a two-day conference, by the way. Hey. 25% to a new tech is 25% to a new Absolutely. tech. Absolutely. Or an old tech, actually. Or an old tech. That's right. Oh, Dr. Saul Rosenthal, thank you so much for coming on the Neuro Noodle Neurofeedback Podcast. Thank you so much. Pete, thank you for having me. And hopefully, maybe maybe I'll have you on the on the uh, Healthy Brain Podcast one of these days as well. Oh, abs- absolutely. And then give my best to Mitch and Angelica. I know you're watching out there, guys. Nice to have met you. <laughs> we'll look forward to it. All right, Sal. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. The Neuro Noodle Podcast is supported by listeners and viewers just like you. A special thanks to our gold and silver supporters. Earn up to 16 CEU hours by attending Applied Neuroscience's NeuroGuide Workshop December 10th and 11th in Madeira Beach, Florida. It's led by none other than Dr. Robert Thatcher himself. There are two ways you can attend, online or in person with the link appliedneuroscience.com slash attend hyphen ng hyphen workshops. And if you sign up now, you can join Dr. Robert Thatcher at his house for a pre-course get-together December 9th. It's going to be a blast. What a better way to enjoy winter by being in Madeira Beach, Florida and earning up to 16 CEU hours. Sign up now at AppliedNeuroscience.com slash attend hyphen NG hyphen workshops. MindMedia.com. Get the latest EEG and neurofeedback technology from MindMedia.com. Their semi-dry sensor cap is a wonder to see, and their EEG amplifiers have been trusted in the field for decades. Their neurofeedback and QEEG courses will get you up to speed in no time. Visit mindmedia.com now.